In this episode, we're going to talk about power. How much power does a BB or pellet gun have? How dangerous are they? Well, we're going to shoot various objects in order to find out. First, I'd like to point out that BB and pellet guns are not all equal in power. They start as low as 250 feet per second and go as high as 1,650 feet per second, which is over six times more powerful. But those are the same velocities as real firearms, like this one. So does that mean it's just as powerful? Definitely not. In order to calculate power, you need more than just velocity. You also need mass. Remember your physics class where you learned that energy is mass times velocity? Typically, the total energy is measured in joules. So, let's look at the difference in mass. Here's a 22 long rifle round. Let's remove the projectile from the casing in order to get a fair comparison. This particular round has a weight of 35 grains. Now, let's compare that to a 7 grain pellet and a regular steel BB. So this 22 bullet would have 120 joules of energy, whereas a CO2 BB pistol would have about 4 joules. A high power pellet rifle could have as much as 82 joules. And an airsoft pistol would only have a measly 0.05 joules. Okay, so let's start the real experiments. First, let's start with the spam test. I do the spam test in most of my videos, but this will give you a better idea of what those numbers really mean. First, I tried an airsoft gun, rated about 400 feet per second. As you can see, it dented the front of the can, but that's all. Also, keep in mind that airsoft BBs are so lightweight that they lose velocity very quickly when flying through the air. So at 10 feet away, it's likely it wouldn't even dent this can of spam. When I did the test on this 350 feet per second pistol, I rated it at 0.75 spam. When I tested this 680 feet per second pellet rifle, it went all the way through the first can and then almost halfway through the second can, giving it a spam score of about 1.4. I don't have any really powerful air rifles handy at the moment, but I'd expect a spam score of around 3 to 4. But for comparison, I decided to try a real gun. I used a 22 long rifle round made by CCI, rated at 1,050 feet per second. Don't try this at home. Okay, definitely went through that one all the way. And that one. And the next. And the next. The result? It completely entered and exited six cans penetrating the seventh can and denting the back of it. That gives this gun a spam rating of 6.9, the highest you'll likely ever see on my show. I decided to try something else. People often wrap objects in denim when testing regular firearms. I thought I'd try that on a pellet pistol rated at 450 feet per second. Looks like the denim didn't protect this can of spam. It took a while to locate the pellet, but I finally did, and as you can see, it still penetrated three quarters of the way through the can. If that had been a person's leg, they'd be in the ER getting the pellet surgically removed. Okay, so here's a question. Can a low power CO2 pistol like this go through a wall? Let's find out. I'm using a scrap piece of drywall for testing. I'll be using this BB revolver and this pellet pistol for testing. Both are just over 400 feet per second. Okay, these were five shots from BBs and five pellet shots. Uh, looks like four of the BBs went through. Uh, one got stuck. Uh, as far as the pellets, looks like two went through and three got stuck. So you might find yourself asking, why did it not penetrate through each time? Well, a quick little science lesson, it has to do with this. These guns are powered by CO2. Every time you fire a shot, some of the uh, liquid inside this canister turns to gas. Well, if you rapid fire very quickly, you don't give enough time uh, for the gas pressure to build back up. So if you watch the video closely, you'll notice the first two or three rounds were always the ones that penetrated through and the remaining ones were the ones that had less power. 